Hi there. This is my Backwalls Tornado Poison Pathfinder. Idea of the build is to use Sacrawalls Tornadoes. Poison with it. Pathfinder. Pretty straightforward. You're gonna need Sacrawalls Flock just to produce the tornadoes. Sacrawalls Talents to reduce the duration and also provide aspect of the avian. Sacrawalls Winds to reduce the duration furthermore. And then you're gonna need Time Twist Rings. At least 8% reduced skill effect duration up to 10%. And a Warp Time Piece at 15% reduced skill effect duration. Doing that in combination with Swift Affliction and Less Duration connected to Aspect of the Avian should bring you down to just over a quarter second for each of them. So every quarter of a second you'll be dropping tornadoes. To the tornadoes we have GMP, Critical Strike Affliction, Increased Critical Strikes, and Efficacy supported. In the boots, as mentioned earlier, we have Swift Affliction, Less Duration, and Faster Casting, Lightning Warp. Lightning Warp in the shoes is very useful, because otherwise you'd want Swift Affliction, Less Duration, Duration on Lightning Warp. Putting it here allows you to get the full supports to Lightning Warp, and also allowing Swift Affliction and Less Duration to support Aspect of the Avian. I also have an Anomalous Herald of Purity, allowing the minions to taunt. A little bit tankier for us. Vitality, level 1, to enable the Watcher's Eye mod. Divergent Herald of Agony, to make sure we cap out our poison chance. We don't grab too much poison on the tree, this allows us to still cap poison. Comb's Heart, we're a little short on life. We, with the Comb's Heart, we barely hit 5k, so without it, we're at 3.6k. Not very great. This allows us to be a little bit less squishy. Yeah, our weapon damage is from the disintegrator battle mage we have 372 to 523 physical damage this will apply to sacrifice tornadoes so we have an average of like 2000 less than 2000 hit damage which is fine because we're not scaling our hit we're scaling a poison and we have withering step increased area of effect Plague Bearer and Empower. Empower will level both of these up, it's nice. All works out. This fifth link right here ideally would be Enhance, giving us more elusive effect and more AoE. Not necessary, but if you can do that, it'd be pretty nice. For the tree, what it kind of looks like, main thing is you need to grab Perfect Agony on the skill tree because the Coralito Signature Flask no longer has it. Grab some life. You need to grab the reduced skill effect duration on the skill tree to bring down uh, Aspect of the Avian's duration. You're generally grabbing crit. All of your flask nodes, with the exception of Druidic Right and the Flask Effect Duration, don't necessarily need that because we are a Pathfinder. So we get a fair bit of duration, effect, and flash charges gained as the small notables on the Ascendancy. On the Ascendancy itself, the main thing is we need to have Max Retoxicist so that our poisons can proliferate. Nature's Reprisal converts 40% of our physical damage to chaos damage. Nature's Boon allows us to recover flash charges every 3 seconds and also reduce the incoming elemental damage. Master Alchemist removes ailments, elemental ailments every time we do use a flask. So we don't, no longer have elemental ailment immunity, but we do have um, the removal. We remove elemental ailments every time we use a flask, and we have our flasks automated, at least the elemental ones, to be used whenever flash charges reach full. Uh, though it might be better to switch this to whenever uh, it's reused at the end of Flask Effect. Might be better. Uh, like we have on the Coralito Signature here. So basically, every time a Flask is used, we remove an Elemental Ailment, which gives us gets us as close to Elemental Immunity as we can get. Um, with these Flasks, we do have uh, the Crafted Modifiers. 15% of damage taken from hits leashed as life during Flask Effect. 50% chance to avoid being stunned during Flask Effect and critical strike chance 
during flask effect. All of these are increased by our flask effect modifiers. So for example, this 50% chance to avoid being stunned becomes roughly 75% in combination with the Heart of Oak and the preceding note, of, note here. We get stun immunity. Our Watcher's Eye is a life gain on hit while affected by Vitality one. The other modifier doesn't actually matter. We have two Heralds, Aspect of the Avian, and Vitality. This is where most of our sustain comes from. Don't have any Leech in this version of the build. This is a level 85 tree, so if you continue past this, it's easy to get a Jewel Socket, some Life, Life, even uh, opt to move some nodes around to get up to this life and possibly the Doomcast for more critical strike chance. Even change the cluster jewels. And speaking of the cluster jewels, we have one large, two mediums. On the large, you need Overwhelming Malice to get Unholy Might on crit, which is up 90% of the time, basically, because we crit quite a bit. Grim Oath, up 100% of the time, because it's just straight up gain 10% of physical damage extra chaos pretty good damage there those are two minimums you can grab a third uh, this is just cheaper on one of these mediums you're gonna want eternal suffering and hemorrhage hemorrhage is probably your better DPS notable gives you critical strike chance and damage over time multiplier from critical strikes eternal suffering is where we get a decent amount of wither from without having to always apply withering step but it does stack with withering step to work pretty well. On the other notable we have Hemorrhage again as it is a pretty good DPS notable and Exposure Therapy reduces the chaos damage uh, we receive such as from Coralito Signature. I do believe that the take, two, the take 250 chaos damage per second during flask effect is increased by our flask effect modifiers so we're taking somewhere around 375 chaos damage per second. So it is useful to have higher chaos resist. Currently, we do degen a little bit with the flask on. So we do have a life flask as needed, and it also gives us corrupting blood immunity. Uh, since we have quite a bit of flash charge gain rate, I suppose, or recovery, uh, we don't really have to worry about losing life flash charges at any point if we hit uh, if we get hit by Corrupting Blood or any bleeding, we can just hit that and we're good. And you can remove this if uh, you, you want to stop the flask effect. We'll jump into a map for demonstration. This is a tier 11 red map. We only have Awakening Level 4 currently, I haven't really gone much further than that, so, yep, Awakening Level 4, Tier 11, follow those rest. from your remains. While standing in hideout, your flask effects might fall off at any point, but because we get 20% increased flash charges gained if we've dealt a crit strike recently, that brings it up to where your flask should not ever fall off. My mana is gone. Oh yeah, one more thing. The inch, uh, I'll turn it on a The Labyrinth enchantment you're gonna want on your helmet is more than likely going to be a, a reservation reduction so that you can fit in vitality without having to uh, have like no mana remaining, use your abilities. I have 20% uh, reduced reservation for Herald of Purity. You can do Herald of Agony. Uh, we 
works just as well. Here's the boss. Uh, you could leave it as uh, the setup right now, or you could switch out deadly ailments for GMP, or switch out GMP for uh, deadly ailments, and you'll see that our damage goes up pretty substantially. Uh, for the most part, single target is still going to be a bit lower than the clear speed on this build. It works very well in expeditions, which I will uh, demonstrate as soon as we find one. Do want to keep GMP on for expeditions though; it just works out much smoother. But because we have so much reduced duration, lightning warp feels pretty good. Here's a breach. I'll show a breach. We got Tujin for the expedition. Pretty nice. Tujin, nice to me. <laughs> yeah, you generally don't want to do anything like immune to physical, immune to chaos. You're gonna lose a bit of your damage. I mean, it's still doable. Do not grant grant flash charges when slain is not an issue. We honestly generate all of our flash charges on our own. We don't get cold damage. Uh, that's fine too. Cold. They're always hitting crits, that's probably fine. There we go. The expedition. Right, one last thing to mention if you don't want to use Disintegrator, you have another option here, which is Black Cane. You're going to need to replace one of these gems for Summon Phantasm on kill. And you can get, I believe, at maximum, you're going to get more damage, more flat physical damage than Disintegrator can provide. The downside is that the phantasms are pretty squishy, it's hard to actually maintain all of them to get that damage. Um, but you are able to use a shield, which can be for damage or defense. It's got good potential, but it's not nearly as consistent as Disintegrator, so I would still recommend Disintegrator. Alright, so thank you everybody for watching. Like, subscribe, comment for the algorithm, follow on twitch.tv slash brutality. Instagram page, it's Brutality Gaming, and take care.